It is the fall season, friends. I recently filmed a video where I was talking about my favorite fall eyeshadow palettes. I will have that listed down below. And when I was filming that video and I uploaded it, one of you commented and said like, hey, are you gonna talk about fall cheeks and lippies? And I thought, you know what? That's a great idea. I love fall. I'm a Scorpio. I'm an October baby. I love fall makeup, although you can wear any makeup anytime. So today's video is all about the cheek products, the blushes specifically, and the lip products that I am going to be pulling out this fall. They make me think of like spooky season, October, November vibes. That's what we're here to talk about. I have five blushes, five lip products. Let's just go ahead and dive in. Today's video is going to be complete with swatches, application, the works, but before we get into my favorite blushes and lip products for the fall season, I do want to let you know I am doing a foundation video, so like that's going to be coming soon, but I did put a little bit of bronzer and I chose this cream bronzer from NARS. It's the Laguna O2 original and honestly, I think mine is kind of dried out. Like I'm still getting a little bit of product, but not a ton. So I just have a light, light layer of bronzer because that's how I normally wear my face makeup. I have bronzer and blush, so I wanted to be true to how I would wear it. And then after all of my blush swatches and applications, I did go in with a highlighter, and this is the Lunar Beauty Moon Shroom Collection, and I went in specifically with this highlighter right here in Tink, and I put that on the high points of my cheeks. We will talk about my eyes in a bit, but let's go ahead and start with blushes. So we'll start with the two blushes that I have on my face today. So I love autumn makeup, but when I think of like autumn fall makeup, I'm thinking of like deeper shades. I love a mauve blush to begin with, but when I think of deeper shades, I think of this one from Patrick Ta. This is the Double Take Cream and Powder Blush in She's Blushing. And so I like this because it's a deeper shade, like almost a deep I mean like a deeper mauve, right? Like a deeper pinky mauve type of shade. That's the blush that's on this side of my face. The thing I like about it too is this does have a little bit of a sheen. No shimmer, no specks of glitter, no chunks of glitter, but it has a little bit of a sheen and the powder is very, very pigmented, y'all. In the demo, you will not see me using the cream product. This product is a little bit older in my collection and I don't love creams anyway, but I feel like the cream has probably gone bad in this. Patrick Todd does say to go in with the powder first and put the cream on top and that would probably give you even more of a shine and a sheen if you didn't want to go in with highlight, but I think this is a blush that I am going to be pulling out a lot in the fall because since it is like a deeper mauve shade, I feel like it's not too deep and vampy that it's going to take away from any eye looks or fall lippies that I'm going to create, but this is definitely not spring summer. Like this is a deeper shade. So this definitely made me think of fall. On the other side of my face, I love to pull out my Gucci blush. This is the Gucci Rosy Beige 05 blush, and I love this one. This is a blush that, I mean, it kind of matches my shirt. Again, it's like that deeper mauve shade, but this one almost has a little bit of a purple undertone, so it definitely makes me think of like deeper spooky vibes. It's not too pigmented that it's going to, again, take away from my eye look or my lip look, but it is giving me a little bit of a deep blush. It can almost be, you know, you see I went in with a little bit of bronzer, but it can almost be that like bronzy type of blush where if you wanted to skip bronzer altogether and go in with something that was going to give you a little bit more pigment, a little bit more payoff, I think that this is a great one. Again, my shade is the 05 Rosy Beige. It's the only Gucci blush that I have. It's really expensive, y'all. When I purchased it, I purchased it during the Sephora VIB sale and like I would recommend that, but this is another great one for the fall time. Before I get into the blushes that are newer to my collection, I just have to talk about Mama Pat, y'all. I have been raving about the Pat McGrath blushes for years, literally for years, okay? Now, you can no longer get this uh, Divine Blush and Glow Trio in Galactic Sun, but you can get these two blushes in here. So this blush right here is Divine Rose, this one is Desert Orchid, and this right here is Golden Nectar, the highlighter. The highlighter's a little bit too deep for me, but these two blushes are definitely, definitely, in my opinion, opinion, fall blushes. Both very, very pigmented. I would say that the Divine Rose tends to be more of a matte, 
but the thing I like about the Pat McGrath blushes is they're not flat matte. So it's not going to be a matte but make my face look dull. It's going to have a little bit of sheen. It's going to have a little bit of like oomph making my skin look plump and juicy. Then in the middle, we have Desert Orchid here. Now Desert Orchid, don't let it surprise you, okay? It looks kind of plain, kind of boring, just like a peachy nude type of shade, but this has such pigmentation and this one gives me a little bit more of a sheen. Like when I'm looking at the pan, this looks more matte than this one, but it again, it doesn't have chunks of glitter. It doesn't have like sparkles or anything like that, but it's going to give you like a healthy nude sheen. So when you're trying to get like those autumnal tones and you want more of like a nude type of blush with a little bit of sheen on your skin, a satin finish, I think this Desert Orchid is a great one. And I mean, I got this in a trio. We know Mama Pat likes to come out with palettes. So I mean, look for a palette. If you can get a palette this holiday season with both of those, I definitely recommend them because the Pat McGrath blushes are like some of my favorites. Another blush that's newer to my collection that I think is going to be fantastic for the fall is from Odin's Eye. This is the Soulmain Sunlight Love Blusher, specifically in pink bloom. Now, when I talked about this, I was doing like a testing new makeup, maybe, I think. I, I don't know. I'll have the video linked down below where I tried this out, but... In that video, I tried this blush out and I talked about the fact that I purchased this one and I purchased the lilac shade. To me, this looks more lilac. It's more of like a muted mauve, almost with a little bit of a purple undertone. I feel like it matches my shirt. This does not scream pink bloom to me. And the lilac shade is more pink and that one screams pink bloom to me. So I'm constantly getting them confused. But the one that I am going to be reaching for this fall is pink bloom because it's more of that like muted, toned down, almost like neutral with a hint of lavender and I love cool tones I'm like in my cool toned era so I feel like this blush I would get a ton of use out of it comes with a nice mirror that I'm covering up so that I don't blind you Odin's eye like their packaging and like their embossing in the pan is just so stunning that it like they do packaging like no other. I absolutely love the design in here, almost to the point where I don't want to use it. This blush is a matte, so it's going to give you more of a matte look on your face if that's what you're going for. It has great pigmentation. It has good wear on the skin, and I think this one will be a favorite for me this season. Okay, but like I said, I wanted to talk about five blushes, and so, uh, I saved the best for last. My friend Angie, Aniela Kanequist, launched her evocative blushes with Singe Beauty. These are her silk blushes. She did come out with four shades. You're going to see all of them swatched on the face. But y'all, when I tell you these blushes, are silk blushes. They are so silky. The pigmentation is amazing, y'all. On my fair skin, I have to go in with a light hand. It's very easy for me to go overboard and put too much blush on just because the pigmentation is amazing, but the way that they blend out. There have been times where I have reached into Timid Tomato or Risky Raisin, and it's gone a little bit too heavy on the skin, but then I just buff it out, and it's like pure perfection. I have never had a blush as long wearing as this blush here. When I tell you, that these blushes are long lasting. I am a teacher, y'all. I do my makeup at 5.30 in the morning. I, I work all day, I come home, I take care of my two children, and I'm not washing my face off until after my kids go to bed. So that's like eight, nine o'clock when I'm washing my face. These blushes, y'all, they last that entire time. Full pigmentation, there's no splotchiness, no patchiness, like they still look amazing and my face is not eating them. And I have never, ever, ever, ever had a blush that long lasting. And I'm not just saying that because Angie is my friend or Singe Beauty is her brand. Like I could tell you that these are great blushes and stop there, but these really, really are super long lasting. Angie did send me these, but I purchased two more. I purchased the Riveting Rhubarb, the pink for my friend Smegs for her to try out. And then I think I got Timid Tomato for my mother-in-law because that looked beautiful on her skin as well. Now, any of these shades will be great for the fall season, but honestly, I would say the ones that scream fall to me are Risky Raisin, Persistent Persimmon, and Timid Tomato. Now, I thought Riveting Rhubarb, the pink, was going to be my favorite, but honestly, Timid Tomato is. And I saw Betty Jean or Batty Bean on YouTube mix Persistent Persimmon and Timid Tomato to create a sunset blush, and I did that as well. And y'all, I'm kind of obsessed with it. The reason why is Persistent Persimmon is one that's a little bit intimidating to me. It's definitely Angie's go-to shade, but when you mix it with Timid Tomato, which 
is such a beautiful like red type of shade. You get this sunset vibe that just looks amazing on the skin. I like to wear these blushes without bronzer. You'll see the swatches without bronzer because I feel like they're just so pigmented and amazing. And the way that again, these have a sheen to them. There's no glitter. There's no specks of anything inside of them. They look matte in the pan and then you put it on your cheek and there's like a healthy shiny glow that definitely reminds me of silk. So don't sleep on these. Angie did amazing. I have been wearing these nonstop since I got them. I love them so much. And since we're here talking about blushes, I will just go ahead and say that my favorite blush brush, my favorite brush for blush, is from Sigma Beauty. It's the F40 Large Angled Contour, and so you'll see that in a lot of my demos. I like it because of the angle. I'm able to like get my cheeks here and then blend back or tap in. It's just phenomenal. So I do have a code with Sigma. It is just Kbella if you're interested in saving some money. I have two of these, and I feel like two is not enough. Okay, so let's talk lips, y'all. I narrowed it down to five lips, but also an honorable mention. We'll just go with what I'm wearing first. I do have a little combo right now. I have the Maybelline Lifter Liner. This is in the shade Onnit 05, which is just like a nude liner. And so I lined my lips and filled them in just a little bit. But y'all... My friend Amanda, Makeup Just For Fun, collaborated with Fantasy Cosmetica. They came out with an eyeshadow palette, but also these little lip balms. This one right here, the name is not on it, so I'm having a hard time remembering it. I think it's Elixir. It's the coffee scented one. It smells so good, y'all. I'm such a coffee fiend. Like when Amanda was working on this, she was like, listen, I have a lip balm for you. It's this beautiful nude shade. You can see underneath that lip liner, it looks amazing. These have like a nice shine and sheen to them. With the lip liner, you get a little bit more pigment. You'll see in the swatch if I go in just with the balm. These are great because you can wear them with makeup or without. Add a lip liner if you want more pigmentation. Wear it on its own if it's a no makeup day. So these are amazing. Specifically, this shade Elixir, my coffee scent. This one and Cozy. Cozy is the pink shade. Those are the two that I have been wearing the most. And I just absolutely love this. It smells delicious. It tastes delicious. It is delicious. I also think this collab with my friend Samantha March and Ofra Cosmetics in the shade Queen is very fall, very beautiful. This was named after Sam's dog Aries who passed away. It's been almost a year so I know that it's been so tough for Sam but I think that this is the perfect tribute to Aries. It's this beautiful copper shade. Aries was a Vishla. She had this copper beautiful hair and then there are some sparkles in here for a little bit of shine, a little bit of extra oomph. I love this shade. I think this is a great one. Again, in the swatch, you'll see it on its own. There is a little bit of pigment there with the sparkle and the shine. This is another one that I would just pair with a lip liner, even the same Maybelline Lifter lip liner. Put that all over your lips. Put a little bit of gloss on top. You will be sparkly and shiny. This Ofra shade with Sam in Queen has sparkle. This one right here from Amanda Makeup Just For Fun and Fantasy Cosmetica does not have sparkle. So like they're kind of similar vibes. Um, I would say that Elixir is a little bit of a deeper brown whereas you have more of a copper with the Ofra but shine and sparkle versus just like a glossy effect. These are great for the fall. I also do really like full opacity though in the fall. I like my deeper shades. I like my vampy shades. And so I will definitely be pulling out this Sigma Infinity Point lipstick. This one is in the shade Deja Vu. Now my favorite is New Mod. That is a mauve shade. But the thing that I like about Deja Vu is it's a deeper brown shade and almost like a warmer brown, but not too warm. This is one I love the way that these sit on the lips. They're very, very pigmented. They're comfortable. They don't settle into my fine lines. This lipstick formula is exquisite, but this Deja Vu shade I feel like is one that's great for fall because it gives me like a deeper nude vibe, but also I feel like it will go with a multitude of eyeshadow shades. I'm still very much into my liquid lipstick era, okay, and I had someone comment and I was like, yes, you're so right, because I talk about liquid lipsticks, but like the beauty beauty community is like over liquid lipsticks, but like I work, I'm a teacher, I do not have time to apply my lipstick when I'm at work teaching in front of the children. Like I'm not going to pull out a lipstick and throw it on, right? And so 
one of you guys commented and you were like, you know, the beauty community and YouTube community may be over liquid lipsticks, but those of us who are working, we are still very much wearing them. So I am going to hope and pray that Odin's Eye still has their collaboration with Angie and Yellow Canique Fist on, this was the Halloween collection from last year, but they came out with lippies also. And this shadow creature, this liquid lipstick is chef's kiss. It's amazing. It is so creamy, but it's like this almost like a brick red. It's not like a red red, but it's not like too brown. It's like this perfect brick red. It's so creamy and moussey, but so long wearing and very comfortable on the lips. So if these are still available, last time I checked, they were available, but on sale because it's a collab. So when it's gone, it's gone. But absolutely amazing. And the other liquid lipstick is from Lunar Beauty. This was the collection, the, it was the mermaid one. The, the, Siren Sunset? It was the Siren Sunset collection. This is the shade Abyss. This is a deep, deep, rich purple, almost like a blackened purple. This is one that I would wear with like no eye makeup or a very light eye makeup. I would go in with this for like a deep, bold, vampy lip. If you pair it, like you could honestly pair it with the Sunset blush combo in Persistent Persimmon and Timid Tomato. Put that on your cheeks, put this on the lips, just some mascara, like that'd be a great fall look in my opinion. I did say that I had an honorable mention, and my honorable mention is one of the old NARS Audacious lipsticks. I think that they've gotten rid of these because they do have a new, a new collection, but this is the shade Barbara, and Barbara is like that perfect, like deeper nude shade, but it's a little bit warm. It's very, very rich in pigment. The long wear of these lipsticks were amazing. I have not tried their new ones, but the Audacious lipstick formula was so stinking amazing. I hope that their new formula is just as creamy and pigmented and and amazing as the audacious line was. I don't think you can get these anymore, but let's hope that they have a shade like Barbara in the new formula. Now this is a cheek and lip video, but when I was filming my fall favorites, my friend Amanda had not yet announced her collaboration with Fantasy Cosmetica on the Enchanted Autumn Palette. I have a whole video on this collection, on the lips, on this, on the candle that's burning in the back, but I thought that it would be fun to create another fall autumn look here. And so this time I did a look that's different than what I did in my other video with two looks. I went in first with the Willow Oak shade, which is just that nice crease brown shade. I feel like this brown shade I'll get a ton of use out of, and it's so easy. Like the look that I created today is so easy. Then I took Luna and put that all over the lid. It's a beautiful, like, I don't even know how to describe it. Like it's like a bronzy gold with shimmer and just, it's it's beautiful, it's stunning. You could totally leave it there and just take that willow oak and put it underneath the lower lash line and you have such a neutral, fun look. But I took a little bit of heron and put that on my lower lash line for a little pop of blue, a little extra. I just, y'all, this palette, it's what I love. It's all of the things that I love. This is the perfect fa fall palette for me. I love the way that you have like these bright pops of color with this emerald shade and this Sagittarius shade. Of course, I love Scorpio because I'm a Scorpio, but then you have this bright, bright Libra shade, a beautiful silver that goes with everything. I love the way you have some neutral shades. You have some of these like diffused cooler tone shades. You almost have like a six pan over here and a six pan over here. I know that Amanda and the team at Fantasy Cosmetica worked so hard on this palette. It is definitely my my Enchanted Autumn, my fall palette dream. And so I wanted to give a little shout out to that as well while we were talking about cheeks and lips. Friends, that is going to do it for this video. I hope that you enjoyed this. If you did, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. I'll probably do like a little fall inspired get ready with me using some of these. If you're interested in that, let me know down below. I would love to hear some video ideas of what you guys are wanting to see. Um, but yeah, that's gonna do it for this one. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.